I have an important message for all American vegans from the Small Farm Training Center. I've heard that there are a lot of parents out there who are super uncomfortable explaining to their kids that cow's milk is bad. But cows, you know, kind of, they're, well, they're kind of okay. In sharp contrast to today's modern ideas that the cow's milk is only meant for the baby calves, ruminate on these facts. The cow is an alchemist who makes our life on the land possible by giving us animal fat without the requirement of violence. A cow's multiple stomachs are the breeding ground for crucial microorganisms that the soil needs to digest its minerals and become absorbed into plant root systems. An individual cow produces 50 pounds of fertilizer per day. Fresh, non-pasteurized, non-homogenized, whole cow's milk is a miracle food, an aggregate of vitamins and minerals. Drinking fresh milk makes fine brain tissues for understanding the subtleties of spiritual life. In traditional Indian medicine, the cow is considered to be a mobile dispensary, a treasure house of medicines. In the Western world, from the time of Julius Caesar to Woodrow Wilson, draft animals such as horses, mules, and oxen tilled the earth to produce food grains for human consumption. But just after World War I, the tractor began replacing the animals. Tractor power pushed the animals off the farm and into the slaughterhouse. If draft animal power is rejected because it's inhumane, outdated, or impractical, well, here's your alternative. machines for our food production. What about the tractor? What's the environmental impact of growing food with a tractor? Aluminum, steel, plastic, lead for batteries, oil for fuel, Soil compaction. And in case you haven't noticed, the tractor cannot reproduce itself. If the traditional use of the draft animal is unethical in the eyes of vegans, then certainly we must agree that the tractor is also unethical. Wouldn't you agree? So where do we go from here? Where do we go from here? Where do we get our vegan food? Vegan food. Who is going to put the bread on the table? On the table! On the table! We need bread! We need bread! We need bread! We need bread! Hey, you urban vegans up there. We're at a crossroads. Draft animals are unethical, some say, and tractors, well, they're an environmental disaster. But there's still one more option, DIY, or as my generation would say, hard hand labor. This 20 by 20 square, 400 square foot, is the typical size of your backyard garden. Come on down here and let's see what's involved. 
What are the tools? What are the skill sets that we need? I have an idea. Why don't we ask an actual organic farmer? Come on over here. That's three cups of wheat berries. That's about what you could grow in 400 square feet. And that would make about one loaf of bread. And of course, that's assuming that you know how to use a broadcaster to sow the seed after you work the ground up. And also a scythe for cutting it down, for flailing it, for winnowing it, for storing it properly. So if you have a family of four and you want to feed them a loaf of bread every four days or so, you're going to need in a year about 100 loaves of bread. How does that 100 loaves of bread translate into actual acreage done by hand. The average yield for an acre of wheat ranges anywhere from eight bushels per acre to as high as 60 bushels per acre. And that depends a lot on soil fertility, weather conditions, and many other factors. However, our point is that a family of four consuming 100 loaves of bread per year would require a lot more than 400 square feet. That's a lot of hand labor, and it's the kind of work that most of us are not used to. My dear vegan brothers and sisters, we love you. We love your energy, your compassion for the animals, your determination to fix this broken food system. But let's be honest with each other. We have to take responsibility from where our food actually comes from. The choices are clear. Here's a little secret about animals and their relationship with humans. The cows, the pigs, the chickens, and the fish are not actually animals. Yeah, it's true. They're spirit souls embodied in a particular body type for this lifetime. And you know what else? The spirit souls, whether they're humans, animals, or even plants, are constitutionally meant to serve the Supreme Spirit, whatever name you want to call it. One last point, and this is really confidential. When domesticated farm animals serve as co-authors in agriculture, they get credit, sort of like spiritual brownie points. I know it sounds wild, but through the laws of karma and transmigration of the soul, the animals actually make spiritual progress when they assist humans in their quest for self-realization. Compassion, real compassion, is tempered by wisdom. The wisdom to know the difference between matter and spirit and the controller of both. Thanks for watching. Check out our website, or better yet, pay us a visit.